Hello everybody and welcome back to Swamp Dog Games. Today we're going to be going over the Humble Bundle for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, brought to you by Paizo. If you are unfamiliar with the uh, recent turn of events, Wizards of the Coast tried to deauthorize their OGL 1.0a, caused something of a minor stink in the community, N nothing big, just uh, decided to have everybody question what are the alternatives to the evil Wizards of the Coast. Well, one of the biggest over there, and ironically, was created the last time Wizards tried dicking around with their OGL license is Paizo and their Pathfinder series. So Wiz uh, Humble Bundle has partnered with them and now provide you a very accessible entry point into the Pathfinder series if you're looking for uh, a D20 style alternative to Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and quite honestly, personally, I believe Pathfinder 2nd edition is superior to D&D 5e. Um, if you like older style D&D &D gaming, you're going to want to stick with the OSR. This is for those who want, in my opinion, a better, more fleshed out, well-rounded alternative to 5th edition. If you'd like to get this humble bundle, we'll be showing you what you get in it. If you would like to help support the channel, you can purchase the bundle using my link in the description below, and it will help support the channel uh, with your purchase. And again, you get access to all of this amazing material. If you are unfamiliar with how Humble Bundles work, usually they come in three tiers. Uh, usually this is the cheapskate tier where they don't usually provide much. However, in this case, the bundle, the seven item bundle for $5 includes the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Beginner's Box, the full 2nd Edition Core Rulebook, and the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Bestiary, as well as... Uh, a little uh, adventure uh, guide to the world and some pawns and a one-shot adventure module. Really, these three are all you need to play for an intro player. All the rules that are in the beginner block box are in the full core rulebook plus some, but this does have some better descriptions on how to play the game, some a little bit more DM support. So if this is either your first time playing an RPG or you're switching over to Pathfinder, there is some material that is of use in the beginner box to help with that transition or for that new player before go, diving into the full core rulebook. Everything that you need minus monsters is in the core rulebook. So uh, the player creation, magic system, even basic game mastering details are all in here. The only other additional book anyone ever really needs is the Bestiary. Uh, however, with these three alone, you can start playing Pathfinder. And then with this adventure one shot down here, uh, you have your first adventure too. Though technically there's a small mini adventure in here. The second level, which is also kind of the up uh, middle ground that really is trying to upsell you to the big one. This also has uh, a few items of worth, the uh, Pathfinder Bestiary 2 in here. These flip mats, when you have to print them out yourself, are okay, but not really much reason, in my view, to get this 18-item uh, bundle. You're either better off getting just the seven item bundle because it has only these three that you need to start playing, or you're going to buy the whole 28 item bundle for $25. In here uh, also includes uh, the adventure pass, the abomination vault, as well as their secret to magic or secrets of magic pathfinder guide with advanced uh, magic system for the pathfinder second edition. A little, it also includes a Game Master's Guide. Again, in Pathfinder, you don't technically need the Game Master's Guide, though it does have some advanced magic, some advanced NPC, some advanced adventuring ideas, equipment, um, suggestions, but it is totally optional. It's a very welcome book uh, in this bundle, worth getting. It's just not something that you absolutely have to get. It also includes uh, the World Guide, uh, a few more adventures, some pawns, uh, some society booklets, and uh, an ancestry guide. One of the best things about Pathfinder is uh, how it provides more opportunity for customization of players, characters, versus 5e. I thought always shoehorned you into a very, if you want, an optimized, or even just generally optimized 
there's only really one way to play it. There really isn't a way to have both a role playing, in my opinion, a role playing play and a competitive play version of 5e. It really is shoehorning you into a competitive play style. It if you want to have a character for role play, you really have to have the game master smooth over a lot. Pathfinder provides a lot more opportunity out of the box. You can have, for instance, an entire starting party of six dwarves, and none of them have uh, overlap with each other, with uh, their unique... Uh, uh, they break out race, so they call them ancestry in this system. None of them have overlapping ancestry uh, feats that allow them to be completely unique dwarves, even though you have six of them much prefer the Pathfinder character creation system. Once you buy it, again, link in the description down below. Uh, the one downside, however, is that this one, most Humble Bundles, when you purchase them, you get a bulk PDF download. This one, you actually get codes similar to if you've ever bought a game for Steam off of Humble Bundle, and you have to go to Paizo's website in order to redeem them. Um, these are not DRM-free downloads unfortunately they do include uh, DRM in there that can slow things down their system is also much slower to process downloads and they but you can technically do some books have a one file download and a multi file download meaning that one chapter per file download system if Pathfinder were to break those downloads up, let's say you have a bad internet connection, you're still in the rural area in the U.S., which really doesn't have good internet, or some places of the world, it would make a little bit more sense splitting off those downloads, If, but they force you to download the whole file at once, which is even larger than the single file. To me, that kind of defeats the purpose of a multi-file download. If you're going to do that... just have the player download a PDF splitting software and do it on their own end. Like, why, dudes? <laughs> uh, however, if you're going to create your Pathfinder account in order to redeem this, I recommend that you go into their storefront and search Free RPG Day, as well as everything that you're going to buy in this bundle. They also still have all of the PDFs from their Free RPG Day modules that they've printed over the years that you can get for free so again for an entry point of either five or 25 dollars you have everything in the bundle plus all these free rpg day material you have a lot of adventuring capacity with very little uh, risk into jumping into the pathfinder system starting off of course you get uh, the beginner's box um, you're not going to get any of the physical rewards. They've had some Humble Bundles in the past that you can redeem them for the physical box. This one doesn't have that. It's just the digital content. Um, so you do get some pawns, the book guides, some character sheets, and a very basic uh, entry-level adventure. Your beginner's uh, character guide gives you a little bit of explanation of how their action economy system works. This is also, in my view, a huge... Uh, upgrade over fifth edition their action economy system is every player has three actions they can do per turn you it either takes uh one action to perform that action english i know it's a joy two actions to complete an action or three actions uh or a full round action so as an example instead of older editions of dungeons and dragons where you would have to mess with my base movement speed is 30 to do a sprint is 30 times 2, or to do a full-on run is 30 times 3. Pathfinder gets rid of that. It's just movement. So it also allows for more tactical movement on the board as well. You can, for instance, rush in with the first movement, slash the uh, villainous character with your second, and then dash away with your third. So it does allow tactical movement if you're using a VTT. It does allow tactical movement in gameplay, and then mo some more advanced skills require more time during the action. Therefore, they take up more of your action economy. That is also ve another very nice aspect of the Pathfinder game system. However, if you're familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, it's not too foreign. It's just they take the base ideas that I think didn't have enough time to cook in the oven for 5th edition and improve on it in Pathfinder. 
uh, as you can see here for an example or like some skills depending upon how you want to perform like a heal action uh, how many action points you want to designate on it to that turn impact uh, how good that action is uh, for that turn. This again is your uh, entry booklet. It'll give some good material on helping a player who's new to RPGs, perhaps new to Pathfinder, give them a quick primer of how the system works and a little bit of a helping hand when going through the system. The uh, character sheet, honestly, I looks nicer than the full edition rule book. I wish they would uh, fix the character sheets for Pathfinder 2nd edition. You really need to go and look for your own third-party uh, character sheet, in my opinion, uh, one that is fillable. The beginning box, uh, Game Master's Guide, this is just the adventure material and some monsters to help you understand um, about game mastering in the system. It does provide one uh, adventure out of the box, so you do have that as well. The core rule book, this is all 642 pages of the core rule book. Everything that you need is here. Another nice thing, too, about the system, I ha was able to talk at Fan Expo with one of the VPs of marketing. I forget her name, unfortunately. She had said that everything in this book, with the exception of one feat, is usable in their organized play setting. However, when looking at the book, nothing in here takes away from that core role-playing experience. So whether you're playing core role-playing or organized play, this is a very well thought out, well managed, well balanced system that allows for the player to actually express their individual creativity when creating their player character, when adventuring for engaging with the environment around them. It doesn't feel like it shoehorns you the same way 5th edition does and still allows you to port over almost seamlessly into an organized play setting. Um, in 5th edition, in my view, you either need a 5th edition organized play character or one that you've worked with the game master to make usable in a truly creative um, RPG environment uh, for ro actually role-playing with your friends at home. This doesn't have that same issue. So, And again, the action economy, some of the way it fixes over the ability for multiple types of gnomes, dwarves, elves. Um, it also, it's multi-classing system which I thought was always clunky. Um, I come from 3.5 uh, D&D originally, um, slash Pathfinder 1st Edition, which was just a slight cleanup of 3.5, call it 3.75 Edition. This version allows for much more customization without being as bogged down as 3.5 was. It allows for much more variation of players without being bogged down and is a very... Uh, player-friendly creative system while still being easy enough on the game master that he can or she can create an adventure without spending hours upon hours of work on it. And as well as uh, the multi-classing, which allows for you to create much more unique individual characters that don't encounter the bloat that some old versions of Dungeons & Dragons do. I'm not even sure if 5th edition can really handle true multi-classing anymore. It's been so long since I've played an actual 5th edition uh, campaign. But uh, this is for those who really want that familiarity with the rules, that old D20, that math that it uh, Dungeons & Dragons uses, but wants the freedom to actually express themselves in their interactions with their environment and the character's uh, creation. You also get in this one the Game Mastery Guide. Again, this is not a necessity for playing this game. It is a ton of optional material. It does include perhaps some DM help for adventure telling if you've never done a game before. It does give some trap assistance, some more advanced material. Again, completely optional. Nothing here is a requirement to play, but if you're going to be getting it in the $25 tier, it's worth it and highly worth your time actually going through it. The Game Master will find all kinds of advanced magical items that aren't included in the base game in here. It does provide a lot of additional 
material for your playgroup. Bestiaries, this one is your standard uh, bestiary. It'll go through all the monsters. Their action system, again, also allows for uh, kind of a built-in basic AI system. It's not as good as some third-party monster AI systems that I've seen developed, but the uh, there's a good starting point because of how the action economy works. It makes your game master think slightly more about what would this monster do, particularly when he has to do the cost of movement and or deciding to move or just use a full round action. Uh, the, the system does provide tons of monster material. Again, 362 pages. It doesn't waste any space uh, in talking about monsters. It also provides all kinds of additional attacks that can be done, all kinds of uh, abilities that the monsters have. This is how you do a uh, monster guide. And most of these you're going to be familiar with because, again, this technically uses the OGL 1.0A. Paizo releases all their material um under the, or, or not all, sorry, most of their rule-based material under 1.0a so that you as a player can adapt it into your own game, your own play style. Um, so the storytelling they keep proprietary to themselves, oh, their uh, adventure paths, some monsters possibly from that might also be caught into it, but it's not going to be any monsters that you're unfamiliar with, but a new take on those monsters that allow you to bring them into your Pathfinder 2e game. Even if you don't play Pathfinder, most of the rules are simple, are familiar enough, you can bring it into an OSR 5th edition game. 5th edition is a little bit hard, well, both OSR and 5th uh, edition are a little bit harder because the math is slightly different to facilitate Pathfinder 2nd Edition's uh, gameplay, but uh, they're still compatible and can be brought into other systems. Again, even if you don't ever want to play Pathfinder 2nd Edition, it's not your cup of tea. You at least have all these monsters that, with a little GM work, can be brought in. The Bestiary 2 is when you get into more advanced style. Some of these are repeats from their original um, Bestiary 2 for 1st Edition Pathfinder, but there is uh, some new stuff in here as well. This is a little bit more focused on Pathfinder world it's monsters that they've created over the years. So here you might find uh, some more things that you're not necessarily uh, familiar with. I see this and my first thought is just a little bit more green. And this could be some spawn of Nurgle. <laughs> Ooh. Some creepy stuff here. Uh, the dinosaurs, though, oh, you can also get your killer dolphins. Uh, remember, this world, they're not going extinct. So, y yes, you can kill as many as you want. Now I get Pete after me. Okay, uh, but again, here are all your advanced uh, monsters. Most of these are going to have some sort of magical element to them, as you could see from the demon baby. The demon baby up above uh, and all of these creepy uh, ones below, the, this is where you're going to get your abominations. Um, there are some more mundane monsters in here, but uh, these should hopefully be more unique. Oh, and Lang, this is, uh, if you're familiar with the Cthulhu mythos, uh, Lang uh, and Cthulhu do exist in the Pathfinder universe. Uh, you can bring Cthulhu in, so... Uh, and, uh, bring the Lang spiders in, though. If any of you remember the old Star Wars book with Han Solo, he goes to Kessel and gets stuck in the mines of Kessel with the crystal spiders. Uh, th this always reminds me of that book, and this I keep on thinking like these guys weaving spice in the mines for uh, the drug dealers to then mine. That's my own little headcanon. Take it for what you will. But again, plenty of monsters in here. Lost Omens World Guide. Lost Omens is pretty much anything to do with the Pathfinder setting. So here you'll find History of the World. This is pretty much going to be mostly the venue of the Game Master. They do have some players guides on Paizo's website. You're better off handing those shorter player guides out 
as they're more digestible. This is really the domain of Game Masters because it will go into uh, in-depth history of everything here. One of the nice things, though, uh, is that it, um, Paizo has really gone for the visual storytelling aspect, both of their art. Their art is fantastic, by the way, but uh, it also gives you the abstracts of the city at a glance in here. You can, for instance, see who are the major religions, the major factions, resources at a glance. So even if uh, you just want to skim through this, it can give you an idea of what all these locations are like in the game. And then if you want to spend more time uh, getting more in depth of all the classes, all the not classes, all the NPCs that are available in these regions. There's a lot of additional material in here. Completely secondary and not available in this, there is the um, Lost Omens Travel Guide that is an in-universe guide to the Lost Omens uh, Pathfinder world. I highly recommend it. It's completely unnecessary it takes everything from an in-universe view but it breaks down uh, some basics of the trade uh, the internal economy to the world uh, it breaks down religion breaks down fashion breaks down the housing that you get uh, it's completely superfluous it even has a cookbook in it that you can make some apps uh, pathfinder dishes it sort of reminds me of the old um dragon lance module that had just a ton of world setting that was completely unnecessary for the average player, but really fun time for that in-universe guide. Uh, Sundered Waves, this is your one-shot adventure. As you can see, sort of a kind of nautical-ish theme, but it's sort of like a ye old pirate theme in the caverns. Uh, again, just through, I'm blowing through here because I don't want to give out too many spoilers, but uh, your small one-shot adventure. Honestly, I think the adventure you get in the beginner's guide is a little bit more in-depth and fleshed out than this one is, but uh, still usable. You also get some pre-generated characters for that as well. There are, I don't remember if I put them in the bar up here, there are some pre-generated characters in another um, file in this download if you get the full 25 version. You also get some maps. Um, I didn't display those because it's just a map. There's no rule material in those. Um, you also get some pawns. Those you'd have to cut out yourself and put on something to be a standee, but uh, could also be usable. The first big PDF, though, that you get in here, well, not first big PDF, the core rules at 260, uh, or sorry, 600 and something odd plus pages is your big one, but the biggest adventure that you're going to get here is the Abomination Vaults. This is a mega dungeon adventure if you're unfamiliar with the classical mega dungeon the idea is that rather than multiple small adventures a campaign that maybe takes place over a continent you have generally speaking some sort of hook or, or town that acts as your home base and then one dungeon that all the players have to dive deep in usually the further down you go uh, the more deadly the dungeon becomes this, though, is focused on becoming sort of a Cthulhu-y, otherworldly um, dungeon, as the name Abomination Dungeon um, kind of hints at. It's not just going to be your starting monsters, your goblins, your uh, maybe some basic clockwork uh, enemies. This starts to go very quickly, and you're dealing with some otherworldly uh, material. Oh my god, it's the demon baby all over again. Oh, be gone, you demon baby. Oh, the demon baby comes for us. <laughs> oh, man, there's a couple people that get that reference, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, this is your big classical mega dungeon. Uh, there's also this one comes into the you can print by chapter. So if you are not print by chapter, but download the PDF by chapter and you can go through here. And again, as you start going further and further down, the dungeon keeps getting tougher and tougher and tougher. And you start getting more out there with uh, how crazy this looks like uh, snow from uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, the more crazy the NPCs get as you are going like truly uh, extra-dimensional crazy in here. 
Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't try to bring in uh, Cthulhu directly into this adventure, because you're definitely being uh, transported to uh, his plane of existence with how crazy uh, these monsters uh, end up getting. Oh my god, it's another demon baby! Save us, O oh Lord, from the demon baby! And uh, <laughs> at the end, though, it does include uh, plenty of NPCs for interacting with. You do have some additional magic items, some unique uh, spells that are introduced. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, saying when you get into, like, that really extreme otherworldly. I think this is even more extreme than the uh, end boss to Elden Ring uh, going through this adventure quickly. You're really going into... Uh, another dimension or another plane of existence uh, on these lower levels but with plenty of unique uh, artifacts that can be found in here um, or this I don't know anything about it other than the name but get your bard equipped with the battle loot that uh, epic loot for engaging in combat the next one is the uh, Secrets of Magic. This one is more magic material. This one, too, uh, I know is also available in digest size and print for, I think, 25 bucks. Um, I don't own it yet. This is actually the main reason why I wanted to buy this bundle was because I wanted the... Um, Secrets of Magic, though after seeing the Abomination Vault, I'm actually going to go out and buy that in print. This uh, That actually looks like a pretty good adventure. This does have some additional magic classes, some additional magic spells. It's still Pathfinder keeps with that Vancean-style magic system. I wish uh, by now they'd moved on from that. Vancean-style magic does have its place in D&D &D history. I've just find myself enjoying other systems better and stop giving me crypto ads. Uh, th this uh, does provide, though, a lot of uh, additional material that if you have spellcasters in your campaign, you are going to get a lot of uh, stuff here to keep them occupied for a long while. Next is A Fistful of Flowers. This was actually on their free RPG day uh, list. This is just a sort of garden-based uh, free uh, RPG day uh, adventure. It kind of reminds me of Plants vs. Zombies-ish, I guess. It's a small one-shot adventure, nothing that uh, is going to be a multi-campaign session, but if you need, like, a day's rest from what you have been doing and want to popcorn he was a bad dude <laughs> oh jeez uh or no it was corn pop he was a bad dude uh if you want your uh uh one shot adventures uh this is also pretty good again though you could get this for free rpg day uh, Book of Boundless Wonder, this is their Pathfinder Society series. This is also part of uh, their Pathfinder Society, is their subscription service for additional material. There's some interesting material in here uh, that can be added. Hands of Blue, two by two. Uh, but the really big value items are going to be your uh, adventure path books, personally. Uh, Again, another society book. Both of these are for low level. Most of this is for low level. The uh, Abomination Vaults are assumed that you're going to start at level 1 and then level up with it. You're probably going to need to have some additional adventures that the players engage on outside of the Mega Dungeon but uh, to help with the leveling curve, but um, shouldn't be that difficult. This, I believe, was also a free RPG day book. This uh, sort of goes with uh, their goblin... Or, Kobold adventure, uh, sort of uh, silly antics of kobolds in the below Absalom uh, adventure that you can engage in. Again, another Pathfinder Society uh, book series. Uh, just some additional material. Again, talking about earlier how they handle um, the classic race in this. If you're going to do old school Dungeons and Dragons, I prefer having race and class separate. This system, however, I believe justifies, uh, at, or sorry, 
old school D and D keeps race and class together. So you're a dwarf, or you're a wizard, or you're an elf, or you're a fighter, because of how it balances it out. This system, because of how it handles ancestry, justifies keeping those separate, in my view, because the just extreme amount of variation and background when you bring in um, different races into your game by handling it through this system allows you to create, again, you could have an entire starting party of dwarves, but each dwarf is so unique from each other that you're not hindering your party and you're still having unique play experience and being able to have unique uh, player characters, even though on the surface they all may be, quote, the, all dwarves. Uh, here, actually, they're going into much more uh, advanced uh, races that you can uh, interact with uh, the world environment. Again, Paizo, their big claim to fame was always goblins, so hence you're going to see goblins shoehorned into everything. As you can see here, they got the hobgoblins. I guess they now have kobolds of the inner sea uh, is now a big item, though, uh, no offense, Paizo, but I think I prefer D&D's artwork depiction of, uh, Kobolds. These guys, their proportions are just so wacky, uh, these Kobolds. They remind me of the sharks of those who hunt elves. Uh, Leshies, these are if you want to play, uh, the local foliage. Uh, like, uh, if you ever want to get, uh on the nerves of your vegetarian friends have like leshies uh, show up and remind them that yes, plants also can feel too. That they're not so morally significant by not eating meat in a world that all, all plant life is actually all leshies. If you want to screw with them, don't do that. I'm being mean, but I, I have seen that done uh, in my group. Someone bugging one of our vegetarian friends by ha introducing uh, a world where all plant life was leshies. <laughs> ah. But uh, plenty of uh, advanced uh, options in here for well as well. Again, lots of variety sake that you can play. Uh, some basic uh, items. Most of this is like uh, ancestral feats is how they handle it in here. So at first level, you like your basic, I'm a dwarf, so I have basic access to dwarf tools. Then you might get, oh, at sec, uh, fifth level, that's when I get my dark vision. I know it might not make total sense. Um, the, why would you get uh, dark vision later in life? I guess we could always go maybe dwarves have a hormonal change at fifth level. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, it allows for, uh, again, that more unique uh, uh, generation of player characters. The uh, Lost Omens character guide, this again is going to go into how the various um, ancestries all fit into the world. Also some uh, famous NPCs that can be brought uh, into the game as well in this book. Uh, Troubles in Otari. This is another small adventure. This uh, is probably like a two, three session adventure, uh, depending upon um, if you can keep your players on track or not. Uh, again, a nice little adventure that comes with that. And then this is actually the Adventures Toolbox. I think this is actually, again, from the Beginner's uh, box where it talks a little bit more about the basics of no these might just be the pre-gen characters uh, but okay this goes with the uh, trouble in otari so oh th this is one of the chapters in it um, i didn't get rid of all that oh well this is uh yeah actually just the adventures in otari this is uh pages 54 through 64 of that okay that's my mistake all right, so that was Pathfinder, the second edition Humble Bundle. If you like what you see here, by all means, please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, please purchase uh, the... Uh, or if you're going to be purchasing it and you want to help support the channel, purchase it through my link in the description below. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I will be returning to RPG reviews shortly. See you all next time. And remember, get away, you demon baby! Get away!